you know, business leaders look for two things. And, and I think these are the primary areas of importance. Stability and predictability. And, and I can tell you in our county executive, we're blessed to have both. Uh, Denny, I, I really want to say thank you on behalf of the business community because those things are true. You've been consistent. Your leadership uh, speaks for itself. Look at the probably the two most significant things that have happened over the past year. Uh, the building of Stockton and the AC campus. The building of the National Aviation Research Technology Park in Egg Harbor Township. Here's the bottom line. Neither of those things happen without county government, without leadership, without the ability to support those when, quite honestly, nobody else could. Uh, a round of applause for that, please. So, so Denny, I, I'd like to bring you up for uh, State of the County. And on behalf of the business community, thank you very much for everything. And your team does for this community. Thank you, Denny. Thank you. It is my honor to serve you. When my wife found out this was a sellout crowd, she said that try not to be boring. <laughs> and I said, it's a budget message. How do I make that exciting? Well, she said, uh, just do your best, put a little effort into it, and it won't be that boring. And I just thought to myself, how many times she said that to me at 40 years of marriage. <laughs> I tell her, I'm not as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever was. <laughs> not original, by the way, Toby Keith. State of the county is very good. Our 2019 budget does not require any tax increase. In fact, we'll see a decrease of nearly two cents in the county equalized tax rate. This is due to our sound financial management practices and the skill of our financial staff. It would be quite difficult for anyone to find a team as dedicated, professional, and experienced as the one we have here in county government. You know, as a politician, I continually compliment my staff. And uh, I did have one person come up and say, you know, I don't know why you give him credit. It is his staff. So I have to share. Not only do I want to share it with my staff, I also want to share it with the freeholder board, which is the legislative arm of county government. No county executive in this state or anywhere and be blessed with more cooperative people than our freeholders. And many of them are here. Please stand up. If they say no, it doesn't happen. Our successful challenge of the pilot also contributed to our solid financial standing. Last year when I was, came before you, I told you it's all up in the air. We don't know where it's going. And the county was upset that the promises that were made were not kept. And there wasn't a whole lot we could do about it. The pilot took out of our budget $3.4 billion from our rateable base. How do you survive that? Well, you don't. So we figured out a, fig a, a number we want 13.5% of that $120 million. And we were promised that. But inexplicably, it was left out of the legislation. Now, when we asked, why did you leave this out? Well, we wanted you to negotiate with Atlantic City. Our statement to the state, and my face-to-face -face with the governor, if it was so easy to negotiate with Atlantic City, 
why did you bring a $6 million law firm in and take over the city? No answer. So the alternative to us was to sue in court. And we did. And we prevailed. Now the difference between what they finally offered us at 10.4% and 13.5, which we eventually received, was a difference of $30 million. Now it cost us close to $300,000 to go to court and to get that settlement. Unfortunately, the only ones that got a bonus there were the attorneys on both sides. Their attorney was from the Chiesa firm who argued their point. And I figured, let me get the best constitutional lawyer we could find. We got the dean of Seton Hall Law School who came down, uh, not cheaply may I add, but we did put a cap on it. He was more than fair with us and we prevailed. So I am very, very pleased to say that the pilot, by the way, I didn't care if they had the pilot or not, that was their business. And why would you need a pilot to begin with? We needed a pilot because the Atlantic City's casinos were grossly overassessed. And they were continually overassessed through the years. Now why did they do that? To meet Atlantic City's budgetary needs, they raised the assessed value of the casinos. Well, that's not how you do things. You are assessed a true value. Well, it never occurred. Now this was under the state's oversight because they were in the financial office in Atlantic City since 2010. So they allowed it to occur. So then they came up with this pilot. In other words, they created the problem and then they tried to solve it with a pilot. My question to them was, we have gaming venues everywhere. We have it in Pennsylvania, we have it in Texas, we have it in Mississippi, we have it in Nevada. They don't need a pilot to assess their properties. Why don't you just assess the properties correctly? Well, that was a question that still goes unanswered. It doesn't seem to me that they have to reinvent the wheel. Now when the lawsuit came, the appeal from Brigada, Brigada was assessed at over $2 billion at the time. They appealed their assessment. And if Fox Rothschild brought down a gunslinger from uh, Nevada, who was from New Jersey, by the way, Atlantic City, graduated from Atlantic City High School. His name was Herbert Bass. And uh, he handed uh, Atlantic City's attorneys, uh, uh, he showed them how things are done. Got the assessment down to $885 million. Not bad, huh? And to show you how smart these casino operators are, right after the pilot passed, and their taxes were frozen for 10 years, they sold a 50% share for 900 million. Then they flipped that for 1.2 billion. Still, their assessment remains at 880 million frozen. When you get time, Google the word bamboozle, because that's what we got. Over the past 10 years, our region has faced significant economic challenges, but we were able to work through them. As a result of the national decline in the housing market, which by the way, we led the nation in foreclosures. It was a horrible situation to be in. But the county wrote it out. There was a decline in our casino industry. Five casinos closed during that period of time. Our number one industry. Five, Showboat, the Taj, Revel, Atlantic Club, and Trump Plaza. We had 15, 20,000 people thrown out of work overnight. How do you recover from that? Well, we were close to hitting bottom. To show you what occurred, the impact of the declining tax base was exacerbated by the need to refund. Now listen to this number. Over $78 million we had to give back because of these appeals. $78 million. It's a penny on our tax rate, Jerry. $3 million. $3 million. 
It's depending on our tax rate. How do you hold down the taxes? These overassessments occurred while the city was subject to strict financial state oversight. No other county has come close to what we had a refund. For 2018, we had a refund. Just last year, we had a refund $8.3 million. Twice, what was the next highest county had a refund. As you can see, Atlanta County government to absorb this had to be in strong financial shape. But because of this downturn and because of the chaos that was occurring with our casinos, the foreclosures, it gave us an opportunity to do some pretty good things. I'm not sure the Freeholder Board or the state of New Jersey or anybody else would have allowed us to put $120 million in the full faith and credit of a county behind Stockton College, Stockton University. After all, it's a state university. Why is the county underwriting it? Well, we underwrote it because we can. Our debt service was extremely low. Our debt was extremely low. And we were in a position to do so. Could we have funded the aviation park going into the airport to capitalize on an industry that we believe will be the future of this county? Without any tenants, without any guarantees, putting tens of millions of dollars into the aviation park. Could we have done that unless we did hit almost to the bottom of where we were? Probably not. You know, many times out of chaos and problems, some extraordinary things can occur. How many of you ever seen the movie uh, The Third Man with Joseph Cotton, Trevor Howard, Orson Welles? Nobody. <laughs> You know, my wife says to me, why do you continually watch this crap? We spend 300 hours a month. We spend 300 hours a month on Showtime, Netflix, and all the rest of it, and you watch TCM. And I explained to her, the reason I watch TCM is there was a, a movie picture code back in the 30s and 40s, 50s and 60s, where you couldn't have, I mean, if you were shot, you didn't bleed. You think maybe they had an intimate relationship, but you weren't sure because the lights went out. So to make a good story, to make a good story, you had to be a terrific writer. You had to be a terrific screenwriter. You had to be a great director. Today, you just have explosions and uh, people's heads rolling down. That's why I watch it. Well, to tell you about the third man where I was going with this. <laughs> It's one of the 10 best film noir, if, for those of you that are film buffs. Um, and there was a character that Orson Welles played. He played Harry Lyme. And Harry Lyme made a kind of an interesting statement in the movie. He said, you know, Italy, for 30 years under the Borgias, had murder, mayhem, warfare, tragedy, intrigue, and what came out of it? Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and the Renaissance. And then he said, Switzerland, after 500 years of brotherly love and democracy, what did they produce? The cuckoo clock. <laughs> So these wonderful things that we achieved were achieved because we were hitting bottom and we didn't know where to turn. How do we diversify an economy? We diversify it by thinking outside the box, by doing things that we promised we would do for years to diversify. We can't just depend on tourism. So we took advantage of the premier testing facility in the world for aviation and we built an aviation park. It's almost like build it and they will come. The first building is almost fully rented and we're thinking about building a second one. 
The position that we're in financially is because we've been frugal. You need somebody at the top to say no. And I've said no plenty. Enough that uh, I don't know how the game's played. You don't know the score. Well, maybe I don't, but I know how to run a county. And I know how to keep taxes low and our tax rate low. And I know how to make sure that our children are not going to be burdened with the debt that we gave them. By the way, don't take my word for it. Why should you? I'm a politician. And we don't stand very well right now in people's minds. And uh, there's a reason why we don't. We did it to ourselves. Moody's, Moody rated us double A two and says the county has retained a stable financial position despite dealing with the financial issues of Atlantic City. Moody's credits the county with strong liquidity, modest debt, and strong financial management. Standard & Poor rates us double A. They note our very strong liquidity, strong budgetary performance, very strong management, and a strong institutional framework. When I taught school, I would tell the kids, you know, if we were doing the Civil War, I would talk about the, uh, the Springfield rifle. And I would say, you know, it had accuracy. You could hit the, a, the size of a man at 500 yards. Well, it didn't mean anything until I said, now think for a moment. That's five football fields end on end. Now it takes meaning. Holy cow, it was deadly at five football fields? That's correct. So let me try to compare where we are as far as our bond rating is concerned. There's over 3,000 counties in the United States of America. Some of them are called parishes, some are called boroughs, but basically they're, they're counties. And nationally, only 18% of the counties have achieved these ratings. Not bad. Not bad for a county that had to return $78 million. Not bad for a county that's in the state of New Jersey with the highest tax in the country. Not bad for the state of New Jersey with their unfunded liabilities and public pension of over $200 billion, which is six times their $35 billion budget. How do they function? I'm going to tell you how they function. They tax you. And that's something we have not done. Even in the most challenging economic times, we've kept our debt low, so we will not pass it on to our children and our grandchildren. The county's net debt expressed as a percentage, and this is with financing Stockton, this is with building the county courthouse, the prosecutor's office, the sheriff's office, financing the aviation park. It's still 0.45% of our total debt capacity. And on top of that, we have an $18 million surplus, which are applied $9 million of it, so we have $9 million in surplus. Not too bad. And by the way, thank you very much. We've heard, we provided economic support for Atlanta County Economic Alliance. This is the lead agency for business attraction and retention. We now have staff, private, nonprofit, economic development, and we also, as we spoke about, Stockton College. Now, why didn't the state finance it? Well, during the Christie administration, the bond rating for the state of New Jersey was downgraded 11 times. No other governor in the history of the United States has so, no, so many downgrades during the term of office. He does hold that distinction. And you wonder why he left with a 21% approval rating. We stepped up. And when, I'll just share this with you. When Stockton College did have the ribbon cutting, they all came down from Trent, patting themselves on the back. There was only one entity that didn't get a shovel, Atlanta County. Think about it. They're not only incompetent, they're vindictive.
I'll show you. You're not getting the shovel. So what? I'll show you. I'm going to give a speech about you. How's that? <laughs> we completed the construction of the first building in the National Aviation Research and Technology Park on schedule and on budget. The research park is now included in a newly created aviation innovation hub comprising a one mile area around the FAA Tech Center and the Atlantic City International Airport. Uh, you know, I, I did mention to you that without us being in the bad shape that we were, I'm not sure we would have gotten the things that we've gotten. And an example is Boscoff's department store. Al Boscoff came out of retirement. A, uh, a terrific guy. And he comes to my office and he said, uh, Mr. Levinson, I need your help. What do you need, Mr. Boscoff? Call me Al. Okay, I knew I was going to get touched now. What do you need, Al? <laughs> so I want you to know something. I got plenty of money. I don't need this. But I also have plenty of employees that I care about. And it's a Future business. Life. Say what? Life, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> He said, I don't need this. I've got plenty of money, but I'm coming out of retirement because I want to keep the hundreds of employees that have been loyal to me working. And I want to keep this, on, this institution above water. If you work with me, I'll work with you. Help me. Well, I brought it before the Freeholder Board. It was a heavy lift. Why should we get involved? We're government. That's business. Laissez-faire. Lay off it. And I understood those that didn't want to do it. And it was not a unanimous vote. But we did it. We put the faith and credit of this county behind it. That was 10 years ago. Mr. Boskoff never missed a payment. By the way, he died in the meantime. His heirs have made it good. The Boskovs in Ake Harbor Township is the most successful Boskovs that he has. So it kept hundreds of people working and kept them all open. So we're proud of what we did. And it was a chance that we took because they could have gone under like other shopping centers and after all, and we're Sears and Penny, they, uh, what direction they're going in. And we didn't get a whole lot from them. All he promised me was the first position if things did go south. And what's first position mean? I get uh, 3,000 pairs of dungarees and some sweatshirts. <laughs> We're also partnering with Embry-Riddle to work with the county superintendents of schools on new workforce development projects. You know, we are doing the best we can to change the way people think down here. We don't have the educated workforce that we would like to have to attract business. Anybody from the chamber will tell you that. And there's a reason why. We were on a downward slope because of casino gaming, which by the way, I'm so glad they're here, and this is not a criticism, this is an observation. When casinos opened in Atlantic City, the highest salaried public officials were the superior court judges, and they were making $55,000 a year. Your cocktail waitresses, your, uh, your dealers were making that kind of money. Why go to college? Why even finish high school? I'm going to learn to be a dealer and make big money. And they did. Unfortunately, when the bottom fell out, those terrific jobs, and six figures, many of them, disappeared. Now, for the same work that's being done, you have one person working two jobs, no benefits. So it certainly has evolved into uh, not a negative, but certainly not the positive that it was. So we had to figure out, what are we going to do? Right now, we are speaking to the superintendents of schools. Phil Gunther's over here, the superintendent of the, the vocational school. He gave it a more glamorous name. What do you call it now, Phil? ACIT. <laughs> it's now the Institute of Technology. That by any other name. But let's get a curriculum that means something. One of the smartest men in the world with the highest IQ was R. Buckminster Fuller. He designed the, the geodesic dome. And he said, teach to need. 
That's why kids aren't getting educated. You fill their minds with all this bull, and they can't use it. Teach to the need, and that's what we want to do. We want the curriculums in the high schools to change. We want STEM education, science, technology, engineering, and math. If you want, you can make it STEAM. Throw in the arts if you want to. That's fine. But let's give them something that they can build on. Well, that's going to be a heavy lift. I live in Linwood. I live in Northfield. Three towns, Linwood, Northfield, Summers Point, three sending districts to Mainland High School, which many of you know. Wouldn't you think with three curriculum coordinators plus a curriculum coordinator in the high school, they would have the same curriculum from K to eight, so when they all mesh together in ninth grade, they'd all be in the same spot? Well, you'd think that way, but it doesn't occur. Our curriculum is better than yours, and uh, we want to keep ours. Why don't you adapt to ours? Of course, nothing gets done. And you want to talk about compromising. It doesn't even happen in three towns with the same likes and dislikes and playing the same sports teams. So it's going to be a heavy lift to get them to, to change their mind. Also, we have Orsted. Wind Energy have come to our area. And we're very pleased about that. Where are the people from Ormstead? It's the Danish firm. Monica, where are you? Okay. Thank you for being here. That's a thousand jobs for them to get started and another hundred per permanent jobs, good jobs, after they get going. They chose our county. We have a place for them. We helped them find a place in Atlantic City to get themselves moving. So there's a lot of wonderful things that are occurring. And while we're confident that there will be more opportunities, we'll not sit back and relax. We'll not sit back and relax. Did you hear that part? <laughs> we'll continue to work together with both public and private sectors to build upon the opportunities that lay before us. That's one thing we can't do. We can't sit back because we're at a deficit when I tell you we're in the state of New Jersey. When I heard there was going to be a state takeover of Atlantic City, I was kind of happy about it. I was hoping it was Delaware or Texas or North Carolina. <laughs> New Jersey is going to come in to straighten out the finances of the main city. <laughs> what are we missing? New Jersey came into the financial office in, the, in Atlantic City in 2010. Atlantic City was 100 million in debt. No wonder they came in. By the time the state left, or said they would leave this year, they are $550 million in debt. <laughs> They declared victory and left. Pocketed $6 million of the taxpayers' money and said, look what we did. Look what they did. They couldn't have... <laughs> I was going to say they couldn't find their ass with both hands, but that would be true, so I'm not. But now you have a case of the blind leading at least the semi-impaired. Can we get out of this okay? We sure hope so. And you do have a bright spot. The bright spot is Atlanta County. And once again, thank you so much for being here. I'm pleased to serve you. God bless you all. Thank you. good time. Uh, thank you very much. Check the uh, Chamber website. We've got a lot of things coming up. Have a good day. Thanks for being here.